Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about an album that I've been looking forward to all year. A Sailor's Guide to Earth by Sturgill Simpson. I want to start off this review by clarifying something very important. I've talked a lot in the past about genre and how it can play a role in how artists are marketed and sold, but at the end of the day, I really don't care all that much which genre an artist chooses. If an artist wants to take a pivot into uncharted territory for them, I might be skeptical of the choice, but provided they pull it off well, I'm generally pretty accepting of all that. And thus, when Sturgill Simpson made his incredible sophomore album, Metamodern Sounds and Country Music back in 2014, I had no problems at all that he was blending in elements of psychedelic rock. After all, he did it really well. One of the many reasons that record is one of my favorites of 2014. But what started to irk me was the aftermath of it all. And one you can expect when an artist starts getting crossover attention from the hipster crowd. And by now, anyone who's followed Sturgill Simpson has heard the comments, oh, I don't like country music, but I like Sturgill Simpson, as if they'd like to pretend that country was never a factor in his development and creation, because they never want to be associated with country music. It's just not cool. It's not a good genre of music. Seriously, those pretentious twists can blow me. Mostly because country is just as viable of an art form as any other genre, and denying the role that Sturgill has played does a disservice to everyone, especially his producer on that record, Dave Cobb, who recently released with Southern Family one of the best country albums and albums, period, that I've heard in the past several years. That said, I'd heard that Sturgill Simpson was going to be taking his country influences even further afoot with his upcoming record, A Sailor's Guide to Earth, beyond psychedelia into more soul tones, including a full horn section. And combined with Sturgill Simpson not working with Dave Cobb and producing the entire album himself, I was more than a little bit concerned. Sure, it was bound to be very good, probably great, but this sort of experimentation was pushing into uncharted territory, and if the fundamentals got compromised, this could get really messy. But look, this man is incredible. He's got great amounts of talent, and I had hoped that a sailor's guide to earth might actually stick the landing. So, did he pull it off? Oh boy, this is a tricky album to talk about. But then again, Sturgill Simpson never makes records that are entirely easy to digest, especially if you're expecting him to conform to any specific expectations. But okay, let's get real. Given how much I praise men of modern sounds and country music, you all want to know if I think this album is better. So let's get this out of the way. Is A Sailor's Guide to Earth by Sturgill Simpson a good record? Definitely. It's a great record, potentially one of the best you will hear this year. But is it better than men of modern sounds and country music? Well, no, it's really not. And no, this isn't just a butthurt country fan who wished that Sturgill stayed closer to the traditional sound. There are other issues, albeit small ones, to get back from really ascending to that height. It is a damn great album, probably will even get better throughout the course of this year, but it's not quite one of the best of the year if I'm being honest with myself. So let's start off with Sturgill himself, and really, I feel like I'm repeating myself since the last review, but it's a sentiment that deserves repeating. This man has one of the best voices in modern country, indie or otherwise. Sure, Chris Stapleton might have more direct power, Power, but Sturgill Simpson has more subtlety and control to let his more liquid tones play across different ranges, from a full-throated howls to quieter moments barely above a murmur. And while you could always make the Waylon Jennings comparison, it's pretty obvious, Sturgill Simpson's rawness and willingness to play into rougher sounds does enough to set him apart. Of course, this also comes at the cost of enunciation, because unless you're pretty familiar with Sturgill Simpson's drawl, his voice can be a little bit difficult to decipher, not really helped by the rougher vocal pickup that he's got in his most layered production to date. This is one of those records where I'm incredibly grateful that I managed to find the lyrics, even though, just like on the last album, they're really not the most important element here. Now, you'd think that me saying that might seem a little bit odd, especially considering that Sturgill Simpson himself has described this as a concept album, framed around a series of life lessons that he's passing down to his son through extended nautical metaphors. Well, here's the funny thing. Especially in comparison to metamodern sounds and country music, this record might feature some of Sturgill's most refreshingly straightforward album to date. The most common an overarching metaphor parallels the relationship between a sailor and the turbulent seas to that of a musician and his art. And Sturgill does plan to highlight both the seductive allures of both on the tracks like Breaker's Roar. And yet, of course, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, because Sturgill's sailor takes the form of a navy soldier on tracks like Sea Stories and Call to Arms. And in the latter case, it doesn't shy away from the darkness that can come with being an enlisted man, having sold his identity to a higher power that piles up the casualties for all the wrong reasons. And between these songs and Brace for Impact, 
live a little the lead off single that uses the consciousness of death in the future to make life all the more appealing because you're gonna die it's very clear that Sturgill's not sugarcoating any metaphorical lessons for his son providing of course the straightforward political rant on call to arms isn't a metaphor or a piece of the nightmare that Sturgill howls on against in that song and to push things even further we have his cover of Nirvana's in bloom sitting square in the middle of the album really the centerpiece with one of the most fascinating lyrical expansions to the song that I've seen where Kurt Cobain intended it for people outside of the musical scene who didn't get the band's messaging and yet parroted so much of it Sturgill recontextualizes the song to fit for his son showing that despite bravado in the music he doesn't know what it means to love someone showing the alternate side to the boy he counsels against the darker world that he can't have a bit more of a sensitive emotive side it's a lyrical shift that Sturgill Simpson had to get permission from the Cobain estate to make and really it makes the cover fit within the record to the point where I honestly wish Sturgill Simpson had opted for a tad more nuanced or complex framing on other songs here like the frankly straightforward keep it between the lines where he tries to deflect from his past hypocrisy to advise his son or maybe call to arms his political rant it just felt a little out of place there but again it's not like you're going to Sturgill Simpson for storytelling or lyricism and I'd argue on songs like sea stories he brings plenty of detail regardless it really comes together but you know what I've avoided the elephant in the room long enough and that's the instrumentation and production more specifically the changes to be blunt Sturgill Simpson easily took the biggest step from traditional or even independent country with this album and I'd be lying if I said that I didn't miss Dave Cobb's production along with it if only to better blend together some of the more garish textures granted this is still country music I'll bet deeply entrenched in the more muscle shoals sound complete with layers of strings thicker bass guitar grooves a lot of weedy organ lines and a really meaty horn section and for the most Part, it comes together amazingly well the strings alternate between being very ragged and very rich the effects laden steel guitar cuts some phenomenal melodies across this album the pianos had a ton of energy to work with the smoky guitar lines and the bass guitar has plenty of presence to build to some fantastic grooves and there are so many little instrumental moments that just click so well for me the gorgeous piano opening on welcome to earth polywog the great tonal shift on the solo of sea stories that is a richer fuzzed out sound that has phenomenal body to it sounds great the absolutely infectious sax and all around you and the ability to build to several killer solos on call to arms even the quieter moments like the steel touch breakers roar the very muted bass and strings on oh sarah they really stick for me and even while some might consider sturgill's restrained crescendo on the in bloom cover total heresy compared with nirvana it's the sort of reinterpretation that takes the strength of the original composition and totally recontextualizes it to fit within the context of the album it really does come together it's a great version now where things can get a little bit shaky and everybody is heard this album already knows this is coming it's in the horn section and the issue is fairly straightforward there are points that this feel a little bit overstated and overshadowed parts of the mix that could have used more of attention or they could have been blended into the overall sound a little bit better now I don't entirely blame Sturgill Simpson for this blending in horns is pretty hard to do given how they have so much strength in the mix but the bizarre thing is that there are points where the horns are actually blended pretty well particularly when it sounds a little bit rougher or scuzzier like on brace for impact live a little or the weedier trumpet line I keep it all between the lines in comparison them, the more easygoing progression of all around you might fit and again the sax solo is great but it does feel a little bit lightweight given the position on the record especially right after brace for impact but at the end of the day look i'm not gonna say i like this more than metamodern sounds and country music i don't it's not quite as good i'm not quite sure it's got the killer standout tracks like turtles all the way down or it ain't all flowers that made that album so goddamn good but i also have no qualms whatsoever saying that this album it's damn great and definitely worth all of your time regardless if you like country or not because as some will say it's barely country to begin with even though it really has more country than you think to me Sturgill Simpson he's on a winning streak and the more I've listened through this album the more I get the feeling that I'll probably round out my, some of my favorite albums of this year it is that good so yeah for me late 9 out of 10 and the highest of my recommendations and yeah I know I'm effectively repeating what every other critic has said about this album at the same time it really is something special so definitely check this out you will not regret it so yeah thanks a lot for watching like to like and subscribe I'd be more than grateful I got the poll up here so what did you guys think about this album because I have to be honest I can imagine the horns might throw some people off balance it is a bit of a broad choice and it's a very different sound than one would expect from Sturgill Simpson but beyond that if there's anything else you guys want me to cover in upcoming weeks or anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation I'm all ears till then I'm Mark you're watching Spectrum Pulse and I'll see you next time